quick update on the uh, garden process. Things are coming along. We have some potatoes coming up now. Uh, that's the one that I uncovered, you know, a week ago or so, but you can see there's others that are starting to pop up and some more here. So we definitely have potato growth, which is good. Uh, I guess we didn't have too much water after all and they didn't rot because everything seems to be coming up on both sides here. Nice little shoots coming up. Got them coming up all along the beds here. So looking really, really good. Some quite large ones actually, like this one here. You know, a couple inches out of the hay already or the straw already. And then we got several in a row right here. If you guys can make those out very well with the, the light, but I think so. Yeah, so we've got a good number of potatoes coming up. Coming uh, up both sides of the beds here. All three of them have some potatoes. The squash that I planted are doing pretty well as well. Got this guy here and that one and those ones. They're doing well. A little yellow. I might want to probably put some fertilizer on them, maybe give them a little nitrogen boost. But other than that, they are looking as well. They are looking good as well. As far as the beans, we don't have any beans coming up yet. Um, I pulled a little of the straw to the side. I don't see much growth. It's only been six days, so it has been cool as well. Like really cool. It was in the 50s and you know 60s most of the week this week. So I'm guessing that it's just been cool and they are not set to sprout yet. Hopefully they'll come up. It doesn't seem too wet under there, so I don't think they've rotted. Um, I also don't see any signs of any sort of um, animal coming in and biting at anything or chewing or digging. The fence seems to be holding up pretty well. I haven't seen anything that would give us trouble, so that's good. The game cams have been pretty quiet ever since we put the electric fence up. We have a game cam here and we have one on the tree over there and they were catching animals every day to two days previously. You know, we were getting deer coming out of the woods back there almost daily and getting, you know, taking their picture on the game cam. And we haven't seen them for a little bit. So I think that either they can sense the fence or one of them or two of them got shocked by the fence and just decided they're not going to come around here anymore. So we'll take that as a positive. Hopefully it holds up and that's actually what happens. One thing that I do plan on doing probably tomorrow, um, and maybe I'll get this on video as well, is I am going to put some cucumbers and some other squashes along this side of the, the bed over here, uh, down that fence line. And then uh, we'll probably plant a few stalks of corn uh, down at the bottom here. We have some corn seed I don't really have much use for. Um, I believe it's even dent corn, so it's probably not something that we would want to eat anyway. But um, we have it. And there is a lot of space here that I don't want to erode away over the summer. So I think I can get two, maybe three rows of corn here. And as you can see from my shadow, this is, um, you know, the way the sun faces. So I can put something tall there and it's not going to get in the way of the plants. It's not going to block the sun from, from the other plants. So I think I'm going to do that. Um, these squash, what I'm hoping is that they fill in this area down here. Uh, maybe we'll stick another squash or two in the corner over here just to kind of let them fill in this side. But yeah, the rest of this down here is just going to be corn, I believe. I, like I said, I have a couple bags of, um, of corn seed that were given to me from my old neighbor in Florida. Um, Melissa, if you're watching, you plant your corn seeds. But uh, yeah, so we're going to try and plant those in just to do something with them. Um, I'll probably run the corn up just a little bit here as well because of that, you know, the sun goes that way. And then, yeah, we'll stick a couple of squash in here. Um, just to see what happens in cucumbers. We have cucumbers, we have squash, uh, vining squashes. So we'll just run those along the fence here and let them kind of just grow up. Uh, as long as they don't touch the electric fence or the electric wire and ground it out, we should be good. I believe I should be able to keep that under control throughout the summer. Um, shouldn't be a problem. I do need to come through with the weed whacker as well and weed whack all along the bottom of the fence because it does, of course, at some point um, get grounded out if there's too much, you know, brush and plants hitting it so we'll clear that out as well today's going to be squash planting day i've got a basket of or a tray of some squash starts that i have started in the house over there they're all ready to go outside it's now the 5th of june so we should be well past our last frost date at this point um what i'm going to do here is along the side of the garden 
I've gone ahead and put some piles of compost down the side here. Um, I do need to clear out some of these weeds. I will take care of that along the way. But um, yeah, we're, so we've created some compost piles here that I'll pull the weeds up from around the sides of them uh, all the way down the line here. Uh, and we'll take those and we'll plant the squash in them. And then when we're done, the crazy dog coming out of the woods. So what we're gonna do is uh, finish these up. We're gonna put some squash plants in each one of them and then we'll cover them with straw. So hopefully that'll help keep the weed pressure down as we go. The important thing is that we have some growth or some soil here, it's compost in this case, that the squash plants can take off in. Um, while this is down on the ground, it should kill the weeds underneath it. And if anything does pop up, I will go ahead and pull it, of course. Once again, we're gonna clear out most of the weeds around the edge of this. Uh, coming up soon here, I finally got a new head for my weed whacker so I can come through here and clean this up. But, uh, but yeah, they're on the side, so they should be able to follow along the fence here without getting in the way of the potatoes, which you can see are all popping up there. So hopefully we'll get the whole side of this in the long run filled in with squash. We can come in up here because there won't be any squash and we can follow along the paths that are in here. And uh, yeah, this should all fill in with squash. We have a couple over here already that I'm just gonna let flow out into that. And then whatever I have left, I might throw one or two more over here. I still think I'm gonna throw some corn at the end down there, but I'm not sure yet. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and start planting these now that I've got the compost out of the wheelbarrow down there. Get these planted. Um, I'll check back in in a little bit, show you what they look like before we cover them up with straw, and then we'll get them covered up with some straw, and we should be at that point good to go. It's supposed to rain tomorrow, so hopefully I can get these in. They can stay nice and, uh, you know, set tonight, and then get a good watering tomorrow. Uh, we don't have irrigation here just yet, so I have been, you know, relying on the rain, which has not been a problem so far. Hopefully it will stay that way. Um, these guys here are doing great so far. They were a little yellow. So I went ahead and uh, brought some liquid fertilizer over today and just gave them a little douse of fertilizer. But other than that, they look great. They're doing well. No bug pressure or anything yet. And the potatoes are really starting to pop. They're coming up very, very well at this point. Uh, we've got a lot of them coming through the, the, um, the straw bales. So, yep. All right, once again, I'll check in in a little bit when the squash are planted in the mounds. So I've now got the squash planted all the way down. What I've got here is um, two cucumbers that I have left. I'm not exactly sure I want to put those yet. I was considering putting them along this fence here, but then I'm thinking that they might block the sun from the rest of the plants. So I'm not positive. We'll figure that out in a little bit. But for right now, we've got a butternut squash, another butternut squash. And you can see I just kind of tapped down the hills a little bit, uh, put the plant in the top. From everything I remember from growing squash in the past, they really don't like wet feet. so keeping them elevated a little bit seemed to be a good idea. I already got a bug on this one. Um, so that's what we're doing. We're just gonna keep them up a little bit, put some hay around it to make sure that the mound stays moist, but not wet. You know, the water can still drain away. And here we have a delicata. Uh, my family loves delicata, including myself. So we're happy to grow that one. Uh, here's another delicata that we started. Also looking great. And then uh, Connecticut field pumpkin, I believe. So just a pumpkin seed that we had. This is the area where we're thinking we're going to throw some corn seeds just because we have them to kind of use this space up. Uh, we'll pour a little uh, soil down and, and grow it there. And I was considering putting a cucumber or two here, but I'm really concerned with this short fence height that the cucumbers will get in the in the way of the, the wire. And I really don't want them grounding it out. So I think I'm going to take the cucumbers back home. The more I think about it, I think I'm just going to bring them back home and put them in my other garden. Um, Later in this video, I'll show you my home garden, which is really a mix match of ex experiments basically that I'm doing in a very small lot that we have here in Vermont, where our current home is. Very, very small lot, like a fifth of an acre, a quarter of an acre kind of, kind of size lot. So very, very small. Um, as you can see though, uh, the mounds do stick up a good amount. You know, they're probably up six inches, eight inches off the base of the, the ground here and that should keep the roots well drained. Um, and they're off to the side there so we can kind of train those vines along the side, along the ground and up on the fence 
to uh, ensure that they're not laying on the ground, but they're also not getting in the way of the, the, uh, the potatoes that are growing. I don't want the squash to overpower the potatoes because squash vines can be quite prolific. They'll grow all over the place. And I figure if we just kind of grow them all this way, you know, when we get down to this last pumpkin, we can wrap the pumpkin this way around the side. And then these pumpkin over here, we can bring this way. And then in the long run, hopefully the vast majority of the edge of this will be covered with squash vines that will help keep down some of the weed pressure uh, and hopefully give us a, a harvest that we can use because we really do enjoy uh, winter squashes. So for right now, I'm going to go get some of this hay over here or the straw and I'll start laying it on top of the hills and pick up my planting cups because I don't want to leave any garbage out here. But I'll be back in a couple minutes to show you what that looks like and we'll call this portion of the garden done. So here we go. We got the pumpkin. Uh, the mound is wrapped in straw, as you can see. And then up the line here, we've got the two delicatas and the two butternuts. Same deal. Took the straw out, wrapped it around, covered the ground well. Same here. Um, as you can see, I left a little bit of the soil showing there because I don't want um, the, the, the squash plants to get too, um, too wet. We do want to maintain moisture in the hill, but we want the base of the plant to not get too wet because it can cause rot on the plant. So. I've left a little bit of space on each one of these to allow for that. Got some straws that are kind of making a mess over here, but so that's what they look like. Um, you know, there's a couple more up here. Got this one, same deal, right? You can see a little bit of soil around it or a little bit of compost around it, but not much. And this one. And I've got my foreman here keeping an eye on me as he's all wet and gross from running around in the muck back there in the stream. Everything is set though. We've got them all planted. I've got those two cucumbers to take back with me. I'll take those back and plant those in a straw bale that I have at the house. Um, we'll hopefully get a video of that today to show you what the house garden looks like. Like I said, it's a pretty much an experimental zone for me, uh, playing around with different methods of growing, straw bale gardening, um, uh, what is it called, fabric pots, and a little bit of in-ground uh, beds with some trees that I, the beds were built with trees that I cut down from this lot. So I'll show you that in a little bit there. Still no growth from these beans. Um, it's been about a week. I really was hoping that we would see something soon here. Um, I still haven't been able to see anything when I pull up some of this straw. So I guess we're just going to have to keep waiting. Um, oh no, you know what? I take it back. Look at that right there. We finally have one. Just yesterday I looked and there wasn't. So, all right, I take it back. We have beans coming up. Terrific. So I'm gonna leave that alone. Keep going here. Let that be and hopefully in a few more days we'll have beans popping through the straw. I will check back in with that when it starts happening at least, you know, maybe in a week or so. We'll see what the potatoes look like because we have a ton of potatoes coming up here that were not here just two or three days ago. So this stuff is really starting to pop off, which is great. All right, well, I will be back with you in a few minutes when I get back to the house so I can show you some of our on property where we, you know, at our house garden set up just so, you know, share the, what we're trying out here. So as I discussed when we were at the other property, I was going to show you what we got going on at the, at our permanent house or the house we're living in until we build our new house. Um, we have a mixture of different things going on here. First off on our front lawn, um, we have some fabric pots that are filled with tomatoes. Uh, we have different types of tomatoes here from, um, you know, black beauties to some cherries and an heirloom variety that my wife's family grew for, um, I guess, a, a, you know, like a hundred years or something. Um, so we're trying to get some fruit off of that and we can see that there are some, some flowers on here. So that's pretty exciting being that, uh, you know, it is an heirloom variety from my wife's family. Um, we just have some like flower beds on the side of the house. Over by the driveway here, we have some pots that have some um, string beans or some pole beans in them. Uh, we'll put these in the middle of the driveway later um, once we get some cars moved around and uh, put a teepee kind of trellis around the three of them so they can grow up it. We've got two apples here that we're going to grow uh, at the lot. So these are apple trees that we're um, waiting for the tractor to get back so I can dig the holes to put them in. But um, 
One of them is, uh, what is the type of this one? Is a Roxbury Russet. So that's a Roxbury Russet, which is an apple that I really enjoy eating. And then this one is a Gold Rush, which is a very sweet yellow apple that um, the wife would probably really enjoy. Um, next up, we have some straw bales. I've never done straw bale gardening, but I saw it online and thought it was kind of interesting. Uh, there's a lot of people that swear by it. So what we have in here is a couple of pepper plants. You can see uh, one of them already has a little bell pepper on there. Oh yeah, this one's got a little chili as well. You can see that. Um, so we've got those growing. And then we have a couple more tomatoes in here just to kind of do it. Um, what's going to go in here is a yellow squash and a cucumber. So we'll have those. And then we have a couple of small raised beds that we built um, with some logs. So I cut these logs from my property that we were at just a little bit ago, brought them over here. We just, you know, butt jointed them together and filled them with pot with garden soil. Um, we have some slugs, so don't mind that. That is just beer that we put out to draw on the slugs. Um, right now we have some beets growing here. Uh, we have three different kinds. One kind grew really well, one kind grew okay, and the other one had some pretty awful germination rates. So I'll probably replant this with some maybe turnips or beans or something, or uh, sorry, beets or something like that. Um, up here we have some kohlrabi, some um, some bok choy, and then some purple bok choy. We had some other pak choy here, but you can see we only had a very small germination of uh, one of the spots. I put two of them. One of them didn't grow at all. So um, my guess is is that those are, those seeds are just a little old and they're not going to germinate well. So we'll probably plant something else there too. Inside of here, oh, that's some, some kale there. We love kale. So there's a two lacinato types and one um, curly type. Uh, in here, we cut this in here because we have a lot of cabbage worms last year. Um, we have some more kale. So you can see there's a several kale in there. And then we have um, three early red cabbages and three late green cabbages. So we are just, you know, letting some cabbages grow up under there. They're doing pretty well underneath the screen that protects them from the moths that lay those caterpillar, uh, you know, the, the cabbage worms, basically. Um, here by the chicken coop, um, we have a fence to keep the chickens out of it, of course. And um, we have some turnips on the end, uh, some turnips on that end. Once again, ignore the beer. Um, a bunch of onions that I started from seed are in here. Uh, we all we had really, really good luck with onions a season ago um, at our last house. So we're hoping to do as well this year. Um, I do notice that onions grow a lot slower here uh, in the cold than they grew in the, the heat of Florida. But they're doing pretty well. You can see we've got some you know red here from the because these are red onions on this side. And then we've got some sweet onions down here on this side, some some yellow onions. Uh, they all seem to be doing pretty well. Got a honeybee flying around there. Oh, not a honeybee, but a bumblebee. And then we have some peas here in the back. The peas, um, to be honest, have been kind of slow and kind of, you know, scraggly. Uh, what I'd like to do, or what I'm going to have to do, is staple some uh, chicken wire or fencing and bring it up to the top of that fence because we don't want the chickens to be eating at the peas. So, um, you know, keep it above their heads, basically. Put a second layer of, uh, of things there. So you can see the chickens are here running around. They're funny sometimes. They just kind of get a wild hair and start running around like nuts. We have 11 chickens. Um, most of them are partridge rocks. And there's a couple of Easter eggs, sorry, um, olive egg layers. The darker colored one, like that one that just ran under there is an olive egger. So we have three olive eggers and eight partridge rocks, which are just cousins of barred rocks, but they're a brown and black color instead of a white and black color. So. Yep, there's a couple of them. See, they're all deciding to come out now. They probably thought I threw some food on the ground. Um, but that's pretty much it for our garden here at the property. We don't have a ton of gardening going on at the property here. We have some peppers in fabric pots as well um, on the other side of the house, but nothing, you know, super interesting to show there. Just more peppers that we grew. So I, I will note that all of the, pep the plants you see here, the tomatoes, the peppers, the onions, the cabbage, the kale, those were all grown um, in-house. So in case you're wondering how we will do this straw bale thing, and I'm, I'm, like I said earlier, I am pretty new to this. I've never done this before. But from all the research I did, I'm kind of following the advice of people that have done this successfully. So what you do is you prepare the straw bales. Um, that's like a two-week process with adding fertilizer, watering, adding fertilizer, watering. Basically, just do that over and over and over again. 
until the straw bale starts decomposing in the middle. Um, you'll notice that a lot of times they'll get a ton of mushrooms. We had a pile of mushrooms here today that I cut back. But yeah, there's some there. Um, they grow all over the place. Basically, that's just, you know, spores that are in the straw. So anyway, when it's all done and it's ready, you can then plant in it. So what we have to do is you dig a small hole. So I use a little garden digger here and you basically just kind of dig a trench in the bale. And you'll notice that even if the bale is really dry on the outside, it's wet and kind of sticky on the inside. It's, it's definitely breaking down. You can smell the the you know the straw basically decomposing um yeah and so you just dig yourself a little hole like this you dig down so we're going to put three plants here we're going to put a summer squash a cucumber and a cucumber in here and um then you put a little dirt or compost in the bottom and then you put your plant in and then you pack a little more dirt on it and you cover it back with straw so like these tomatoes were done that way and this peppers were also done that way and if you look underneath the straw here, you can see there's a teeny little bit of dirt in there. And that's basically just to help them a spot to get started. So I'm gonna do that with these other two plants and I'll check back in in a minute and show you what it looks like. What we've done is taken a little bit of potting wicks or you know, um, raised bed soil, whatever you have, and put that in there. You could also put compost or whatever else, just some sort of mix that the, uh, the plants can get started in. And then we're gonna take these three plants here that are in cups, we'll put them in there, put a little more soil on them, and then put the straw back over top. So I'll show you that here in a second. So now we've got them planted. You can see basically we just kind of packed in the soil underneath them here, uh, filled in the hole a little bit with some soil and then put the plants in and then pack some soil around them. Uh, basically, once again, what this does is it gives the, play, the plant a good place to get started. 